What's growing on, gardeners? It's Saturday, July 2nd, and it is a hot, humid, oppressive day here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. Today, I'm going to share with all of you how I prevent disease spread and help keep my plants alive in my hot, humid, wet, oppressive, disease-ridden southern climate. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. Here in the humid Southeast, it is not a question of if disease will get your plants. It's a question of when they will get your plants and simply planting disease resistant varieties is not enough. You need a routine to help keep the disease away if you want to maximize your harvest. What do tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, and zucchini that you buy in the grocery store all have in common? Well, aside from being the most common vegetables that we grow in our annual vegetable gardens here in the United States, the thing that they all have in common is they were almost certainly grown indoors in giant commercial greenhouses. And that's for a very good reason. These plants absolutely hate getting wet. When they get wet, it spreads disease. They do not like being rained on. In fact, if it were up to those plants, they like to grow in semi-arid areas along river or creek beds so their roots can collect as much water as they want from the rivers and streams without ever seeing a drop of rain touch them. The sad reality is if you live in any kind of climate that has significant humidity or rainfall during the growing season and you're growing your disease susceptible plants in an open air garden like I am because you don't have a big hoop house structure to grow them under, you're going to have to deal with disease pressure. It's just a fact. Despite the fact that we have had a significantly drier than average summer so far, my tomato plants are still for the most part covered in disease. When you deal with rain and humidity during the growing season, it is imperative that you have a good natural fungicide spraying routine to help keep the diseases away. And my normal routine is to use this liquid copper concentrate that I have linked down in my Amazon storefront. And what you do with this is you mix it with water and you spray it on your plants about once every seven days, and that will help keep the diseases off your leaves. And this is very effective from early May into early June while it gets hot and humid here, but before the thunderstorm season really starts firing up. The problem that we have right now is that we are in full blown thunderstorm season. It rained yesterday all throughout the day. It rained this morning all throughout the morning, and it's supposed to rain every single day to some capacity moving forward for at least the entire next two week forecast. So I can't spray this every single day in my garden. This has to sit on the leaves to work. So if I simply spray it on my plants every single day, not only is it not going to dry off the leaves, and have any kind of function, but I'm just throwing my money away and I'm pouring all of that copper that'll run off into my soil, which is not something that you'd want to do constantly. So what are you supposed to do if you live in a climate like mine that is extremely humid and it is extremely wet and you can't spray things on your plants every single day as a preventative because the rain will come in and just wash it off? Well, there is some good news. There is something that you can spray every single day, even during the rainy season that will not hurt your plants and will not hurt your soil. And you can use it basically as much as your wallet allows. Other good news, it's also super cheap. And the way I do this is by making a simple hydrogen peroxide water spray. I simply take this 3% hydrogen peroxide right here and I mix it in water at a concentration of 12 tablespoons per gallon. And that is good to help stop disease and in sometimes even reverse disease progression in my garden. Now this 32 ounce bottle of hydrogen peroxide right here is 64 tablespoons. So at 12 tablespoons per gallon, this is 5.33 gallons worth of treatment for my garden. My entire garden takes two gallons to spray. So at 99 cents, each container, that means it only cost me 37 cents per treatment every single time I spray my garden. So it doesn't get much cheaper than this. You just have to absolutely make sure that you buy 3% concentration hydrogen peroxide because if you buy a stronger concentration, you are going to have to reduce 
the concentration of the amount of tablespoons into your water commensurately or else you will burn up your plants. I find that 12 tablespoons per gallon is about as strong as my plants can handle without causing any kind of damage, but you should test spray first on your own to confirm to make sure that you don't see any damage when using this method. Now some of you may be thinking you said this was a natural means and hydrogen peroxide is a chemical. Well hydrogen peroxide is a chemical just like water is a chemical. Do you consider water a chemical? Because if you consider hydrogen peroxide a chemical then so is water. Water's chemical formula is H2O. Hydrogen peroxide's chemical formula is H2O2. And the way that hydrogen peroxide works in your garden is this. While water is mostly stable at Earth's atmospheric pressure and out in the open, hydrogen peroxide is not. When you release hydrogen peroxide into the open atmosphere, it begins disassociating. The H2O2 begins breaking down into H2O and O2. That is water and oxygen gas. So it breaks down into two completely safe counterparts. Now when you spray that hydrogen peroxide on the leaves of your plants, it will immediately begin disassociating. And that is that fizzing that you see when you use uh, hydrogen peroxide. That fizzing, that bubbling, is the oxygen molecules and the oxygen gas breaking apart from H2O2 and leaving water behind. So it's that disassociation, that fizzing, that is happening all over your leaves that is actually killing things like blight and leaf spot and powdery mildew. It is actually really effective as a cleaning agent and because it simply breaks down into water and oxygen gas, it leaves no nasty chemical residues behind. It's pretty much as pure as a method of treating disease as you could possibly hope for. Now before you begin just spraying hydrogen peroxide spray in your garden all willy-nilly, there are a few things that you need to know so you make sure you do it correctly. The very first thing is when you spray your hydrogen peroxide solution, you need to make sure it's after sunset. And that is for two reasons. Number one, the sun will degrade the hydrogen peroxide too quickly. You want to take its time disassociating so that fizzing, that bubbling, takes place over as long of a period of time as possible since that is basically what's having the cleaning and purifying effect on your leaves. The other thing is you don't want to apply the peroxide spray in sunlight because the sunlight could magnify the effects and actually cause leaf scorch or leaf burn. So you could damage your plants. Wait until the sun has set because not only will it work better but you will be much less likely to incur any damage on your plants. The second thing is, when you spray the hydrogen peroxide, you need to make sure to coat the plants as evenly as possible, and especially get underneath the leaves of the plants. Under the leaves is where the disease mostly hangs out because the sunlight from the sun, that UV radiation, purifies. So usually there's a lot less disease on the tops of the leaves because they're actually exposed to the sunlight. You need to get underneath and really spray under the plants. And if you use a two gallon pump sprayer like this, it becomes very challenging and very monotonous, especially if you have to do it almost every day in the rainy season like I have to. Luckily, there is a much easier and faster way for you to apply your spray. And that is using this amazing ULV fogging machine to apply the individual sprays. Now, I have been raving about this ULV fogger for years now because it has turned what used to be an hour-long chore into five to ten minutes of fun. And not only is it a lot more fun to apply any kind of pesticide or a fungicide, but it does a much better job because it micronizes it into a mist that evenly covers the plants. And because of that, this has actually paid for itself over the past two seasons because I use far less concentrates. What used to take three to four gallons to spray my garden now only takes two gallons because this applies it so much more efficiently. So I'm saving all kinds of money in the concentrates since I'm using so much less for the same amount of coverage. Now, if you're interested in this machine, I have it linked down in my Amazon storefront under disease prevention and pest control. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. It has made my life so much easier. And like I said, it has paid for itself over the past two years and it works just as well today as the day I bought it. So now that our machine is full, we're going to go apply it to our most disease susceptible plants.
And just like that, in a matter of minutes, all of my disease susceptible plants have been sprayed with the hydrogen peroxide solution. Now, I want you to be reasonable about this peroxide solution and not expect miracles to happen. This hydrogen peroxide solution is not going to cure all diseases from your garden, and it doesn't have to. All it needs to do is slow down the progress of the disease slower than the natural growth rate of your plants. So as long as you can keep the plants growing faster than they're dying, the plants will keep pace with the disease and outcompete it and continue to produce. So that is all that we're trying to do here. Yes, you can kill disease with it, but in my experience, you have to have consistent dry, low humidity weather and spray every other day to really start knocking that disease back. You're just trying to keep it from growing forward in these really wet periods. So spraying your plants every time it rains, at least if it's a significant rain and humidity event, you can really keep these plants growing and extend their lives by several weeks, if not a couple of months. Using this simple, cheap, natural method of disease prevention, I have been able to grow tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, squashes, and other disease-susceptible plants deep into the summer where many other gardeners fail, and it's all because of this wonderful hydrogen peroxide spray. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use as fungicides in my garden or any of the products in general, they are all linked in my Amazon storefront link down below in the video description. And while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Oh, I'm going to get Dale's ball. I'm going to get it. Get it, get it, get it, get it, Mr. Dale. Come on, Mr. Come on, let's go. Oh, it's such a nice, sweaty, humid day to play. Every day with Dale is a good day to play. Get it, you booger! You booger! Okay, Dale. Dale, can you drop it? Dale, drop. Good boy. Ready? Ready to play? Ready, mister? Go, buddy! Look at him go. Oh, he's so fast. Oh, he's such a good boy.